Hello again, everyone. This is the Cannabis News with Rick Thompson on 420 Post. Let's begin. Well, we have two stories this week from the you really can't do that files to share with you. The first is a tale of epic stupidity, which some which should serve as a lesson to all of us playing on a statewide scale and also maybe a few select individuals who have a national audience. Here's some friendly cannabis news advice. If you feel like telling a judge that they're a corrupt individual, just don't, don't. Take the case of a person the Lansing City Pulse describes as wannabe marijuana magnet Michael Doherty of Rebel Industries. Now that's a Michigan cannabis company. Doherty has a long history of really unwise actions when it comes to how he conducts himself publicly. In the early years of the cannabis business program, Doherty published a video of himself in front of a table filled with thousands and thousands of dollars in cash, bragging about his success and his abilities. <laughs> Last year, his rebel company was placed in receivership because Doherty didn't meet his financial obligation to lenders. At that time, Doherty made some pretty unkind statements about the legal system, which was passing judgment on him, including some unwarranted attacks on the judge presiding over his case. Well, he made those statements again, but this time it was in a courtroom setting. Doherty was in a court to face criminal contempt charges for writing threatening emails to some principals in the receivership case. While acting as his own attorney, Doherty refused to take the witness stand when ordered to do so by the judge. Then when he did take the stand, he repeatedly called the judge corrupt to her face. Doherty now has 93 days to think about how he could have better phrased his unhappiness as the judge slapped his entitled ass with a contempt of court order and he was led away in handcuffs. You can watch a video of the bad kabuki theater that is Doherty's performance on reporter Todd Haywood's YouTube channel. Now I'm trying to think, is there any other national figure who makes a regular thing out of calling prosecutors and judges corrupt? You know, there's this one guy Anyway, in our second Don't Do That segment, we have exclusive brands and their misadventures in cannabis-friendly Gaylord, which is a Michigan city in the central part of the Lower Peninsula. In a February council meeting, exclusive was told their operations were not in alignment with city codes. Specifically, the lighting they had chosen was not in compliance with codes and they were not to open until they fixed that problem. Well... They didn't listen. A little more than two weeks later, they opened with the incorrect lighting anyway. But you know how it is when you feel like you can break rules and not have any consequences. You break even more rules. According to reporting by news outlet The Center Square, exclusive brands erected a tent in their parking lot without a permit, violated the prohibition against using words or images associated with marijuana on their building, and they offered curbside delivery, which is expressly forbidden in Gaylord's ordinance. Well, when your screw ups number one, two, three, and four, you don't get to play anymore. And the council revoked their license to operate in the city. They were open less than one month. Hmm. Attorneys for the city expect to plead for a reissuance of their operating license as an April 10 council meeting. Exclusive has eight other dispensaries across Michigan. Now, our final story is a tale of doing all the things right and the wonderfulness which comes from it. This past weekend was a big one for the city of Ann Arbor as a series of cannabis themed events brought in thousands of visitors. On Saturday, the 52nd annual Hash Bash rolled on despite high winds, freezing rain and low temperatures. Despite all those negatives, a hardcore crowd of more than a thousand people attended and heard speakers like John Sinclair, the county's prosecuting attorney, candidates for public office, longtime well-known advocates for social justice like Adam Brooke, Jamie Lowell, myself. Music was provided by Cosmic Knot, and the bash was just one of four events taking place on that weekend. The Monroe Street Fair rocked out with an expanded space before, during, and after the bash event. The fair is the event that almost wasn't. Organizers fought through city challenges and an attempt to squash the open smoking street party just weeks before April arrived. Now, the third event in Ann Arbor was the Hash Bash Cup, a three-day whole hotel takeover of music and celebrations featuring Bizarre from D12, Pony Boy from Los Marijuanos, 
Willie J. Peso, and other recording artists pulled from across America. The Cup is a cannabis competition, which for the second year featured independent unlicensed growers competing directly against licensed growers from Michigan's highly regulated marketplace. Now, the final event of that four event successful weekend was the Hash Bash Treasure Hunt, which is a drive around town and get freebies kind of a program organized by Josie Scoggin and members of the Redemption Foundation in support of the Great Lakes Expungement Network. More than $25,000 were raised to help offset the cost of expunging criminal cannabis convictions from people's permanent records. Great Lakes Expungement has performed more than 700 expungements in Michigan, all of them paid for by donations and performed by volunteers and foundation members. So if you're keeping track, here's the scorecard. Thousands and thousands of people flocked to one of Michigan's greatest cities. There were zero arrests, zero health emergencies, four outstanding happenings, and the city felt the love. I'm very proud to have been involved one way or another in all four of these events. And there is no better example in America of breaking the stigma associated with cannabis use. And before I give this show back to Mike, we have to note the passing of a cannabis industry figure, Robert Platzorn from Florida. Now, Robert's known as the Black Tuna, Platzorn served more than 30 years in federal prison for being a world-famous drug smuggler. Bobby was an author and a friend, as well as a cannabis entrepreneur who had his own line of products sold through the True Leaf dispensary chain in his home state. And we wish the best wishes for his family and all of his friends who will miss him.